This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, I'm Tom, this is Aspect Science, and trees might be the best ready-made solution for taking carbon dioxide out of the air and solving this whole climate change thing. The idea is that trees take carbon out of the atmosphere and they use it to create new materials and grow. So they not only reduce the amount of CO2 that's in the air, they also store it away, which is pretty great. Now lots of countries and organisations have been jumping on the idea of planting trees recently, including me with Aspect Science. Some do it to offset their carbon emissions and some do it for other reasons like regenerating local areas. Now recently a research paper was released that made the internet go a little bit crazy for the idea of planting trees. It looked at the actual available amount of land where we could plant masses of trees to try and combat climate change. And it found that there could be as much as 0.9 billion hectares just ready to go right now. And just for a little bit of context, that's around the same size as the whole of the United States, all covered in trees. Now the article suggests that this amount of trees could potentially remove and store up to 205 billion tons of carbon. Now that's around two thirds of the amount of carbon that we humans have emitted since the industrial revolution. Now there might actually be some problems with these claims, which I may go into in a future video. But just generally, this sounds pretty good, right? We could just plant a whole bunch of trees and be on our way to solving this whole problem. Well, I was just chilling the other day, you know, consuming my standard like 500 hours of YouTube content when I saw this from my buddies Levi and Curtis. Here's the deal. Forests absorb 40% of the world's carbon dioxide. And as you may have seen on the news, we are burning them and logging them into oblivion. We pulled together and donated over $6,500. 6500 And all of this money we pulled together to save one million trees okay. in the Amazon. Okay, well, actually Yo! Hey man! How's it going? It's so good, it's so good, it's great to talk to you. Yeah, good to chat to you too, man. So I was just watching the video that you did with Curtis. Did you guys really save one million trees? Uh, actually, um, we saved more like five million trees. <laughs> five mi- Man, that is a lot of trees. Yeah, it's actually crazy. Yeah. So you guys chose to save trees instead of donating to like a tree planting scheme, right? Yeah, we looked into it a fair bit. And while it is great to plant trees because we will always need trees. And if we can plant them, why not? It's actually a lot more beneficial to save trees. And that actually might be something you want to look into more. Which is exactly what I did. And it turns out that planting trees to save the planet is actually a lot more complex than you might think. It's expensive, it takes a lot of time and physical effort, it's hard to plan properly, and if done wrong, it can actually cause more harm than good. Unfortunately, it isn't as simple as just dropping some seeds and then just sitting back with a cold one just waiting for your forest to grow. A lot of the trees that are planted won't even survive unless they're looked after properly, so people need to be constantly checking on and tending to these forests. Poor planning and management can make areas more vulnerable to things like wildfires, and could ultimately mean releasing more carbon than the forests even take in. So the idea of more trees no matter what is not always the best solution. Now forests are also complex and they're intimately tied to the conditions of the areas that they're grown in, which means that one size doesn't fit all. When trying to create a proper forest, you have to consider the local environment and which species are either native or are just gonna do well in that area. And you can't just plant one tree type over and over again. That's not gonna create a sustainable forest. You see, just planting a tree doesn't solve anything. In order for tree planting projects to fight climate change, the trees have to live long enough to capture a good amount of carbon. And for that to happen, they need the right conditions and a healthy or supportive ecosystem. Ecosystems thrive on biodiversity, but planting the same tree type over and over and over again isn't going to promote that biodiversity. And it can even lead to what are called biodiversity deserts, which basically means that there ain't going to be much going on. And this leads to reduced chances that the trees and the forests that are planted are actually going to last and store carbon for very long. 
You hang in there, bud. That's a good tree. Just think of all the carbon it's storing, lasting for so long in this proper forest. Amazing. Nice. Now, in order to get all of this right, it requires a lot of time and a lot of planning, which brings with it a massive amount of expenses and a whole heap of other social and economic issues. And this is all for a forest that you can't guarantee is actually going to grow into something capable of storing massive amounts of carbon. And even if it did, it would take decades for it to reach this stage, which is time that we might not have. But ultimately, the real kick in the nuts is that with deforestation currently accounting for as much as 10% of global CO2 emissions, it doesn't matter how many trees we plant if we continue at these rates of cutting down the trees and the forests that we already have. And all of this is why a lot of the time when it comes to planting versus protecting forests, the better option is just looking after what's already here. Standing forests are great because they're already standing. We don't have to go through the effort of planting a new forest. But on top of that, they're already storing gigatons of carbon. And if we can prevent those trees from being deforested, that prevents all that carbon from getting released into the atmosphere. But all this isn't to say that planting trees isn't a good idea. There are solutions to a lot, if not all, of these problems. And if done right, it does actually counteract CO2 emissions. Not to mention all the other potential benefits from having more, healthier forests. And who wouldn't want to just live in a greener world with more trees and more massive forests to explore? So really, I think that the actual answer to the question of planting versus protecting forests is... Do both. Neither of them is going to be a silver bullet that's going to solve all of our problems. But both can play an important and vital part in combating climate change, when combined with changing our behaviours and reducing our greenhouse emissions in other areas. Personally, I'm still going to support tree planting operations, and you should feel free to as well if it's something that you want to do. But just try to make sure that your hard-earned cash is going towards tree planting projects that are done right. And currently, trees are the only proven and scalable tech for mass carbon removal and storage. So ultimately, all I've really got left to say is bring on the trees. I just want to take a quick second to thank this week's sponsor, which I'm really excited to say is Skillshare. Now, when I make these videos, especially ones like this, which are kind of challenging a mainstream view, like the idea that planting trees could pretty much solve all of our problems, I have to search around and read a whole bunch of articles and source material in order to try to make all of the information in these videos as accurate as it can be. But then I have to take all of this information and convert it into an interesting video that has an engaging script. Now, recently, I've been using Skillshare in order to improve my skills in this area by taking some time to go through the New York a staff writer Susan Orlean's course on non-fiction writing, which takes you through every step of the writing process, from as simple as just choosing what topic you're going to be writing about, all the way to uncovering elements of a story that a lot of people won't know about. And it's really helped me to improve and gain some skills that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to learn. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes which are just as valuable as this one that I've been using. And they cover topics ranging from motion graphics all the way to teaching you how to be more productive with your day. And what's great is that the nice people at Skillshare have hooked us up with a great offer. All you have to do is use my special link that's down in the description below and you'll get two months free of Skillshare Premium, which I'm sure you're going to agree is fantastic. I highly recommend giving it a go and just finding out about some new skills that you didn't know you could learn. So like I said, I'll put the link down below and all you've got to do is click it and sign up. So that is it for this episode of Aspect Science. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you check out Levi and Curtis's video, which is all about a new project called YouTubers for Earth, which you can actually get involved with. I'll put a link to it down below as well, so you can check it out nice and easy. So until next time, you keep discovering the world around you and I'll see you then.